everyone. It's Alexis Cardoza. What's up, everybody? It's the Wild Rhino Clark Connors from New Japan Pro Wrestling. And I am here getting wild, drinking an 805. Hey, this is Billy Starks. Rip F and Bison. I ran out of booze. Join us because we're drinking at Moe's. I am the fire starter, the carny killer. I am born to die, Jake Crist. This is Bobby Olson. We're drinking at Moe's. You better hit like and subscribe. All right, everybody. I want to thank Reaper Apparel for having Drinking at Moe's be a brand ambassador. They encourage everybody to break out of that comfort zone, live their best self, which, hey, that's what got me starting the podcast. But they got great clothing, great apparel, T-shirts, hoodies, beanies, hats, all that good stuff. Be sure, link will be in the description, and use the code Drinking at Moe's to get ten percent off your order. Let's fucking. All go. right, everybody, welcome to Drinking Moe's. This is my two cents. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow, I love my Dr Pepper, but it gives me the burst like crazy. But anyways, before we get into all of that, you know the drill: subscribe, share, comment, all the good stuff. And you know what? Treat that like button like it's Dorothy Mantooth and you're taking her out for a nice seafood dinner and never call her again. Dorothy Mantooth is a sick. Hey, hey. You understand me? Dorothy Mantooth is a sick. Hey. Wow. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell, I had to. I thought I'd come up with something new for that part. But, anyways, the dust has kind of. Finally settled a little bit with this whole CM Punk debacle. <laughs> and we're going to give, you know, I gave my little spiel, but we're going to go do a little bit more of a deep dive into it with this episode. So, uh, you know what? I'm going to let you lead off with this one. Oh, God. Oh, Okay, so if anyone out there is a that listens to this, that watches this, is a huge CM Punk fan, I'm just going to say this right now. I'm sorry. I truly am out of my heart. What I'm about to say may piss some people off. But in my view, from the time that CM Punk started pissing and moaning in WWE till this last time when Tony Khan finally had to fire him, he's been an entitled jackass. Uh, I've heard some people call him a cancer in the in the, in the locker room. Um, yeah, uh, ever since he started deciding that he should be the main event, no matter what, in WWE, and they didn't give it to him, he became a douche. He became a douche. Um, he sat at home and did like what MGF said. Made comics that nobody read and made movies that nobody watched. And although, still, and still thought he should be at the top of the mountain. Yeah. Although, and you know what? I was going to, in somewhat of his defense with the whole movies or TV, um, heels. He is in that. And I do love that show. But his part seems to be not so much in the forefront. Right. Definitely. Um, I mean, Heels is about the is about the wrestling family. And he's just like a, a journeyman wrestler coming in. You know, and if it wasn't for the fact that somebody threw it out there to see him punk was in there, I I wouldn't have noticed it. I mean, yeah. Apparently, apparently AJ Lee's in the cast for this next season. Nope, she's been recognizer. Yeah, you know, it took me a second, but I have yet to watch this this last week's episode. Right, right. But yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm enjoying it. But yeah, it would. 
when CM Punk first popped up, it, it took me like a second, but I got it pretty quickly. AJ Lee, it took me a little bit longer. Like when they, it took them like to really get an up close shot. And then I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, oh. Oh, that's kind of like yeah. you know the makeup job they did on uh, Punk for for the first season for the first time he showed up. It's like you know one of those like oh hey hey, hey. is that Punk? Pull out your phone and be like hey it is Punk because you know and then yeah. you know, you realize that it, it, you, you can't lose that thought. Yeah, and you know I'll I'll admit when. When he came to AEW before the first little incident, mm-hmm. I, I was like a lot of people. I was like, okay, this might be pretty cool. You know, everybody's been clamoring for him to come back. Now he's coming back through these guys. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get let's give this a shot. And then mm-hmm. all out last <laughs> year happened, mm-hmm. and it's just like. Oh my god, really? And then when you know they were just suspending him, and it was like, okay, wh- whatever, he's gonna come back. It's it, like I'll cautiously optimistic is the way that I like to put it, mm-hmm. but it's just like, like I've told a lot of people, it's, it, it needed to happen, like Tony Khan firing him mm-hmm. is. You can't have... How long has he been back from that damn suspension? It hasn't been that damn long. And and it'd be funny, I just saw this earlier today, and I I talked with you about it earlier, like earlier in the week. Um, We were talking about that collision that the Bucks were on. Mm. Now, and, and, and here's where I might upset some people, and some people might not know this. The only reason why they created collision was to see him on. That, I've that, heard that, I mean, and I've heard I've heard Turner Networks were wanting more programming. You know that that's that's my that's my two cents. Yeah, whatever. But it was just the fact, and I, and I and I say that because look at all the people that he's basically sat there and said, "I don't want you here. I don't want you here. Go home." I mean, hell, Christopher Daniels is a producer with AEW, and I think he also he's their head of talent relations. And they told him, you know, you're not wanted here. Go home. Uh, Dolph Ziggler's brother, but I completely forgot wrestled. But he had a Twitter exchange with Punk, and uh, so yeah, they come up to Collision. They they tell him, hey, by the way, you got we got something for you for Collision, and he shows up on Collision, and it's old. Now we got nothing. Go home. And it happened with several other people that they were just told, go home. And it just so yeah. happened, coincidentally, that there were people that had an issue with Punk. That's why I say they created a collision for Punk. Is that true? And possible. Yeah. That, but then I had read earlier, like I said, I told, brought it up to you, that the Bucks were actually at collision because the Bucks have been on Dynamite, they've been on Rampage, but they stay away from Collision, along with Kenny Omega, and that's about it. Anyone that he's had problems with in the past, you know, basically the Box and Kenny Omega, um, they basically stayed away from CM Punk, and everything has seemed funky and dory. And then this whole thing, you know, everything that happened with All In, and what are we going to do about it? Um, so when the, I guess my understanding is the Bucks had showed up, with Tony Khan, they were going to sit CM Punk down and they say, hey, you give us six months of keeping your ass clean, let's 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 sit down and have a bigger discussion about where you sit with this company. That's my understanding of why the Bucks were there. Well, then, next thing you know, here's, here's uh, Tony Khan opening up Collision, saying he fired CM Punk. We've got the bucks here. Let's use them. Yeah, I've I've heard different things about <laughs> that whole meeting that apparently didn't end up. I don't know. I've heard that it didn't end up happening. That 
people were told about, hey, we're going to have this. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden it was like one side or the other said that they didn't want to be a part of it. Yeah. I, think and, was, I heard it was punk because um, a lot of things I heard, the Bucks were willing to sit down and discuss things with punk. Yeah, it's like I said, it, it's just one of those things that apparently this stuff has been going on for quite a while. Like mm-hmm. from I I've, I've even heard going as far back as Ring of Honor before he went to WWE. Like it's literally been that is what has led to his departure That's from each cool. place. That's almost as bad as the uh, Claudio Eddie Kingston thing going on. Hey, I, I'm I'm loving it. I'm loving oh, Eddie Kingston, love Claudio. Too. I'm I'm personally that's for a whole nother episode. I'm loving it. Like the last last night actually, when they had the interview segment between mm-hmm. Claudio and Eddie, and I'm like, holy crap, Eddie just came up with another goddamn t shirt. <laughs> You know his whole redeem these nuts shirt that yeah. I actually have. The way he walked away from that interview segment last night with "Thank my ass," mm-hmm. boom, t-shirt. There you go. There's some merch for I, you. I'm almost gonna. I'm like, I'll even. I'll be a legit a little upset if they don't actually make a t-shirt of that. It's freaking golden. Cool. Goes right. Al- do, do, do you do you follow any Kingston on Twitter or X as they call it these days? I don't even think he has one anymore. I mean, if you had it on Twitter, he could sit there and go, hey, by the way, new merch for you. Thank my ass. So I, I'd be all for it. But, yeah, Punk, it, man, it, it is kind of funny how before, before Fight Forever came out, mm-hmm. there was, like, word, like, okay, is Punk actually going to still be on the cover? Like, how is he going to be featured in the game? And right. he's on the cover. He's featured in the game. And hell, um, I'll reach back here for this. <laughs> AEW has those LJN style figures. Oh, yes. Got, and the one for the most recent uh, line, I'm thinking, what was, I'm forgetting which line that is right now. Unmatched or unrivaled, <laughs> one of the two. Speaking, but speaking of that, okay, they, but, they okay. got CM. They got CM Punk. They got one for CM Punk that literally, relatively recently, just came out. So I was like, "Well, shit." <laughs> and, and and speaking of that, and I think I told you this that if I was ever going to start collecting, uh, wrestling stuff like that, um, I would I would. I'm actually waiting. And I think the pre-sale is going on right now. Ethan Page has his own line, and yeah. the one that I actually want is his karate man. That's the one that I would have. I would, I would put that somewhere, and then people can just look at that. Looks like Ethan Page. Why is he dressed like that? I'm like what? you have no clue. That one, I want that one, but then I'm also wanting uh, the Legion of Doom ones. <laughs> yes, that actually looked pretty cool, but. Uh, Going on, going on that as well. Uh, I was at my local Walmart earlier this week, probably like Thursday or Friday, and uh, I, I saw that AEW came out with a single of uh, uh, Mr. Brody Lee mm. and one of Owen Hart. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. did did it have a little sticker on it? I I there's had a sticker, but it, it, it looked like a young Owen. Yeah, they do have those because a guy that I recently interviewed that his episode's coming up in like another week or two. Mm-hmm. He, Kyle Peterson, big fan of his. He actually recently went to three different stores <laughs> and found three different Chase, like one of 5,000 versions of the Owen Hart figure. Really? Yeah. Like the same figure, but at three different stores. Right, right, and yeah, 
And it's like, holy crap, I don't think I've ever seen one at a sword. And the funny thing about those retro ones, you know, the one you showed at Derby Hour, you know, yeah. when I first saw those, I'm like, eh. Yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll be one of those toy lines that just kind of, they don't sell enough, so they die away. And they're still going strong. I'm actually surprised they're still going strong. Yeah. I mean, might I be, got, it might be the old school uh, toys. Yeah. The, the retro stuff is kind of coming in strong there. But yeah, like, I've been wanting to get all of the LJN ones, but now with punk, it's like, well, I want only reason I really want to get it now is so I can have eventually whatever ones that they have out there. And it's like, God dang, man. The the punk one is like, well, I guess I can go ahead and open that one because there's no way he's gonna want to sign that shit. Uh, the only problem I have with punk getting fired is that you so, so back before All In, for those that don't know, we we did a a preview. We we did our own uh, predictions for it. But by Wednesday, the show had changed so much that Big Mo over here just said, eh, "We're not going to work," which I'm totally fine with. It, it's true. A lot of it had changed, and pretty much, if we would have gone with what we would have gone with, uh, a lot of been a lot would have been wrong. Yeah, it, it was just one of those things that it's like. So yeah. one, of the things, one of the things that I had said was that CM Punk is going to win his match, MJF is going to win his match, and then they're going to start pushing for a unification match. Yep, I, we both agreed on that. Yeah, and and if you never listened to CM Punk do a promo since he came back. He would take shots at MJF, subtle shots at MJF, to try and get his go and try and get something going there. And, well, now we know where everything's going after all in. Now we're, we're going for, uh, it's either going to be Roderick Strong or Samoa Joe. And I'm, I'm torn as to who's going to wind up winning that tournament. Once again, another tournament, by the way. Yeah, no, we, we did talk about that and, yeah, I had a damn tournament. Yeah, I was I was so looking forward to that possibility of that title mm -hmm. unification. But yeah, well, looks like we know where that went and and yeah, another tournament. And I'm I'm just thinking, man, e either way it goes, I I'm gonna love the match, but man. I'm almost wanting to say I would – damn, where would I want that to go? <laughs> I know. On, on, one this, hand, on one hand, they're, 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 if they go with Joe, they're doing the deep dive into, you know, the whole NXT Brooklyn thing. And, you know, I don't know how they how they work it with that. Or they can go with the Roderick Strong angle and bring Adam Cole into it. Which would kind of tie into some of the things that I brought up last time we talked. Oh yeah, no getting them involved and yada yada yada, and you know, everyone's still waiting for someone to turn on someone. Yeah, either way, but still, either way, how it goes, I'm. They got a story they can put in there. Oh yeah, and the. the thing I'm liking about AEW right now is they're not so easy to read on how oh God, yeah. what way things are going to go because I brought it up when with the people that I was watching all in with that it's like my times that I've done the WWE predictions for like SummerSlam I think okay. I got like I think I got like two matches wrong in the right. entire card and it was, it was one of those ones where it's kind of like you either didn't know what was going to be on there or it was one of those where it's like you, you're not sure, so you just you don't predict it. It's like, it can go it's like any, mini miny, any, mini miny, yeah. that one. It's like, oh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Judgment Day versus versus this guy. Let's flip a coin and just, you know, head, heads are going to win, tails are going to lose. Yeah, so... Although, 
when going back to the whole uh, thing that they're leading into with the Grand Slam this year, I'm almost one to as much as I want Samoa Joe to win because I I'm a big Samoa Joe guy. Oh yeah. I'm almost thinking with the storyline that they had with, you know, MJF, Adam Cole, and uh, Roderick Strong in the kingdom, it'd almost be a little more fitting to go down that road. And, and plus, on top of that, you got Joe, who's a uh, Ring of Honor TV top champion. Yeah, so e- either way, it would be pretty epic. Although, yeah. Well... I think that is about all for CM Punk. Um, but to be honest, good riddance as far yeah. as I'm concerned. It needed I, to be I, done. I hope, I hope some of the rumors that I've read about today and yesterday are not true. Um, I, I've heard something about the fact that he's wanting to go back to WWE. But I'm really hoping that whoever's in charge of WWE, whether it's Hunter, whether it's Vince, whether it's Dana White, I don't know who's in charge anymore. I just don't hope someone goes. No, no. I've seen you. I've seen your work in the UFC. You suck. Um, I've seen your work backstage. You suck. Um, the only thing you're good on is the mic, and you're fairly decent technically when you want to be. But other yeah. than that, no, no. Yeah, no. On the mic, in the ring, hands down, he's. Good, but it it's to the point where it's like, is the backstage bullshit enough to? N- no, you, you you almost did part of his old promo in the ring on the mic. Hell, even at commentary. Ah, uh, <laughs> wants to finish it. Go ahead. No, but yeah, that is about all we got for this one. We got yeah. more recording to do, so. Let's fucking go.